Coast to Coast keeps the primetime bargains coming your way. This Eklund 22-piece hex wrench set is only $8.99. This industrial quality key set comes in a full range of sizes. Standards up to 3 8 metric up to 10 millimeters. Plus, it's only $8.99. The November primetime bargains are waiting for you at Coast to Coast, your nationally known, locally owned, total hardware store. I know the flavor of extra sugar-free gum lasts an extra long time. But a friend told me, extra winter fresh gives breath a freshness it's never had before. So I tried it. She's right. It does keep my breath winter fresh. An extra, extra long time. After all, what good is fresh breath? If it doesn't last. There's only one way to keep your breath winter fresh. An extra long time. You're watching Channel 5. This was a town that had become routine, staid, predictable, no more. It's no longer going to be white men in suits standing around telling you how important they are. Cats are in, dogs are out. Uh, the Gatlin brothers are definitely out. Elvis is in again. What you're going to see is a change in the energy and the youth that come into the city when they arrive. In Washington, a personality transplant is in progress. This is ABC News Nightline. Substituting for Ted Koppel and reporting from New York, Forrest Sawyer. For most of us, this presidential election was pretty straightforward. A vote for change over status quo. Now we all start thinking about things like how to get the economy up and health care costs down. Oh, but inside the beltway that separates the nation's capital from everybody else, this is much bigger than the nation's future. This is about careers and social clout. After 12 years of Republican rule, everyone knew who to suck up to and who to ignore. And now, heaven help them, they've got to start all over again. Hostesses are baiting their hooks for future cabinet secretaries. Real estate agents are all aflutter too. Who, after all, will land the biggest fish? And power brokers are running through a crash course in Arkansas chic. This is the dark night of the political soul when panic starts to set in. So tonight, to ease the pain of transition, a primer on how to survive the Razorback invasion, beginning with our own Jackie Judd. And now, the end is near. To my career, so what would you do? Oh, <laughs> the Bush administration. Are we glad to get rid of that group of people? I mean, the town had died. Now, I want to remind you that I am different than Mr. Bush, and I am different than Mr. Perot. Those two men, they only want to be the president, but I want to be the king. Just the mere fact of having a new crowd is just like a blood transfusion for this city. And I think that's the way it will change. It just will be more electric and more energetic and more exciting. The city everybody loves to hate is beginning a new love affair. Bill Clinton's here. I'll treat you fair. The party hacks to cut your tax. Well, don't cut Medicare, I wanna be He wants to be Yo, panda bear The relationship Opera won't last forever. Loyalty isn't in the blood here. Washington, in and of itself, doesn't really have any style of its own. It doesn't have any culture of its own. Um, business, media, everything is really defined by the Oval Office and who occupies it. Today we're featuring Arkansas stew. Tell me what's in it. We have beans, beef, lamb. Prior to November 3rd, we were using the Evian water, and we are now pouring Mountain Valley water. It comes from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Need I say more? The Clintons seem to at least want you to believe that they're going to go out a lot. Um, that's going to influence what restaurants are hot, what neighborhoods are hot, um, where people hang out. That kind of thing. President Bush was then Vice President Bush uh, started coming here 1985. But please bear in mind, duck swims, it'll swim in all waters. So he hopes 
or will the newcomers flock to all the old familiar places? That's the Mondale house. This is the house that Songa used to live in. And it's very popular in the neighborhood. It's a very eclectic neighborhood. Um, money really isn't important. There's a bit of reverse snobbery. Mm -hmm. It's thought that if your lawn is too well manicured, you should be out doing better things. Your list of what's in, what's out? Well, I think if you do, if you go down that list watching these guys, cats are in, dogs are out. They have a cat. It'll only be the second time in history we have a cat in the White House. And probably more than a little cattiness around town. What will Hillary do? Um, what, what kind of style will she bring? I think Hillary Clinton would uh, be inclined to wear something architectural like this. She's physically fit, she's body aware, and she's inclined to dress accordingly. The Bush crowd, uh, not what you'd call uh, young and hip by any means. Um, you'll see young people, you'll probably see a, 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 a more eclectic taste in uh, literature and movies and theater. We do hope that when all those hard-working policy wants need a little rest and relaxation, they'll follow the lead of their leader and read a mystery. We pay very close attention to them, and everyone wants to emulate them. I'm going to have them riding this donkey here. People laying palm leaves down in front of him. Somebody's saying, why do you think this is a bit much? <laughs> oh, no, it's just the beginning. All the maitre d's and the hostesses and the, party, the people who organize the charity balls are sitting down right now with, with picture books and lists and trying to figure out who's going to be hot and who's not. Right now, there's more. it's not as much elbowing for power as it is elbowing for access, because access is power. And you can't have power without having access, and access means to the number one. Hello, Governor. What brings you to Washington? Power. <laughs> you can be an idiot in this town, you know, and have an IQ of 13, but if you're close to the president, you're a friend, you've got some major connection, you've got a position of power, you've got power. Who you know is still important. But I think that uh, geek chic is really going to be predominant. That is, it's going to be in to know a lot, to be a, pol uh, a propeller head. I think it's going to pay to be a policy wonk, exactly. Today, at the White House, here in the White House, the big thing on the agenda was a seminar held at 2 o'clock on how to write a resume. <laughs> so, um, you know, people are in, in a state of frenzied job seeking. A lot of them that are going to have a rude awakening. After you work in the White House, it's awful tough going to National Association of Left-Handed uh, Truck Drivers, for example. When you don't have the White House and you don't have either House of Congress, then you're left with just ideology to fight about. It's going to be glorious to watch. But the losers shouldn't lose heart. Remember, this could just be a fling. You just have to look at all the people who are out and think four years from now they could be back in. The one rule that you always learn in Washington is that no one is ever down and out for good until they are in the ground with a stake in their heart. And so it is a very big mistake to count anyone out. And anyone who does that just hasn't been here long enough. I'm Jackie Judd for Nightline in Washington. And when we come back, we will be joined by two Washington journalists who've been watching all these changes coming down the pike, and by a writer and one-time insider, he's reformed now, who says that in Washington, things never really change. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Nicoderm. I don't remember. It was something... something. The Nicoderm patch. Nicotine transdermal system. Yeah, it's called Nicoderm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the patch. Right, it's a patch. Nicoderm. A lot of people don't know about it. You know, maybe I'll ask my doctor. Nicoderm. It's a patch, huh? Yeah, it's a patch. Nicoderm. Derm. Derm. By prescription only. I can't believe she asked you out, Sam. I had to say no, Herb. Whoa. <laughs> Cough, sore throat. Try nice. Sugar-free nice showers your throat with medicine for icy, cool relief. Cool, feels better. So what you gonna wear? Well, only have one suit. Oh, yeah. Put your throat on ice with nice. 
For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a Die Hard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard, the battery you can count on for more power when you need it most. It's Mako's 20th anniversary. After 20 years, 7 million cars, and 5 presidents, what's next? A party. Come on in and celebrate Mako's 20th anniversary. The Big 2-0 with big savings during our 2020 anniversary sale. Right now, we're taking 20% off all Mako paint services and 20% off cosmetic body labor. The savings are everywhere. Call or come on in and save twice during Mako's 2020 anniversary sale. If that showroom shine is your bottom line, get Mako. Channel 5 is making it easier for you to get the news you want without the wait. Every night at 10 o'clock. It's called 10 at 10. In the first 10 minutes of the news, Channel 5 will give you local breaking news. Guaranteed. Channel 5 will give you news from around the nation. Guaranteed. Channel 5 will also give you tomorrow's forecast and breaking sports stories. Guaranteed. Why wait for the news when you can turn on 10 at 10? Everything you need in the first 10 minutes. It's a Channel 5 guarantee. Tomorrow, everywhere you look, Malcolm X. But what's it all about? The man or the marketing campaign? Watch World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Calvin Trillin was a speechwriter in the Johnson White House. He's now a syndicated columnist, poet for the Nation magazine, and staff writer for the New Yorker. He joins us in our New York studios. Ellen Warren is the White House correspondent for Night Reader Newspapers, and she joins us in Washington. Also with us from the nation's capital is Chuck Conconi, editor-at-large editor for Washingtonian Magazine. Ellen and Jackie Judd's report just a moment ago, you said that they held a seminar for uh, how to write re resumes at the White House. Now, were you joking? Did they really do that? Uh, no, they, are, they actually did have a seminar for anybody who wanted to attend. It wasn't only writing your resume, it was how to find job leads, how to follow up on them, and essentially how to find a job out in the, uh, out in the real world. Clear example that these folks have been in power for a very long time. Exactly. Um, ironically, the Republicans who are, who are beating the drum of uh, the importance of the private sector, after 12 years of working in government or having to go out into the private sector and find out what it's really like. Listening to you, Chuck, it sounded like you're putting on your tap shoes. You're kind of glad they're oh, gone. I'm, I'm having a great time watching this go on. I know of one Schedule C appointee, a, a presidential appointee, who went over to the Democratic National Committee and actually said to them, if you get me an appointment, I'll be a loyal Democrat. <laughs> I mean, these guys are desperate. Is there a lot of befuddlement? They, they just haven't really gone through this kind of process before, Chuck? Oh, I think that's true. I think that... Uh, you know, they've had 12 years. Actually, the Republicans have been scraping the bottom of the barrel for appointees. The fun thing now is all the resumes that are going on among the Democrats who have been waiting desperately to have a chance to get at the White House or one of these plum jobs. You know, Calvin, what this election was about, I think, for an awful lot of people was that they were sick and tired of business as usual in Washington. Now, can this signal the kind of change that the American people want? Well, I found... Uh in covering campaigns, I think most reporters would agree the main difference between Republicans and Democrats is that Republicans are marginally uh, less likely to lose your luggage. <laughs> um, so th I think that there's a certain similarity. Um, the, um, the fact that, that, the, that uh, all of these Clinton appointees are coming in in this miserable real estate market able to buy houses at that prices i think is some indication that god may be a democrat after all uh they can at least afford to live there uh i don't know if it'll be a big change i think that the uh it's true as we heard on the on the report earlier that the republicans uh this administration was a pretty tight bunch of um of uh, wasp business types i mean that kind of loosened up on Saturday when they came into the office. They only wore a blazer. They didn't wear a full suit. Um, so I think the Democrats will be, will be wearing jeans when they come in on Saturday, but they'll still come in on Saturday. So it's not that much different. I, I guess one of the things I'm getting at here, Ellen, listening to the report, there is something a little unseemly about all this hustle and bustle and trying desperately to figure out what is going to please the next people who occupy the White House. Well, um, I, I think you're absolutely right, Forrest, but uh, the, the scramble is on and there's a sense of, uh, of purpose and excitement that is inevitable because things are changing. There's also this sense here in Washington of uh, 
spine-chilling anxiety as people are trying to get jobs trying to buy houses, trying to get their kids in uh, the best schools. And so, you know, uh, there's just all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, I think one of the odd things about that is, you, is I, I suspect those people don't know which way to jump because Clinton's kind of mixed up culturally. I mean, he's from Arkansas, but he went to Georgetown and Oxford and Yale Law School. So if you want to try to figure out how to be, say, a, an uh, a kind of Jesuit, Euro Jesuitical Ivy League Yahoo. It's very difficult <laughs> to know which way that's going to come down. So I suspect the people who are waiting to uh, do whatever he does are not quite sure what to do now. I've noticed really. a lot, a lot of people in in Washington starting to talk with these kind of phony Southern accents, giving that kind of a shot. People are saying, "How you?" And but, restaurants mm -hmm. are putting in catfish and getting ready that way, too. I mean, but this is not Bubba and Becky Sue coming to Washington. Calvin's right on that. But are, are people really, Chuck, seriously trying to figure out what Arkansas chic is so that they can, they can do some of that? Oh, they really are. I mean, you see it everywhere, and I think you saw it with that one dress, manu at one dress store. I mean, people are trying to figure out what kind of clothes they're going to buy, and they're trying to second guess. I mean, uh, the Redskins perhaps are going to be out, and we're going to worry about the Arkansas Razorbacks. I mean, you know, that kind I, of I, thing. I noticed that the guy didn't have any chicken in his Arkansas stew, which is the main product of the state, so he may have missed it right away. Well, just give him a little time, Calvin. He'll get there. He's having the yeah, menus printed right now. That's right. I think at least also people will leave Arkansas alone. I mean, Arkansas has been the butt of jokes for years. I know when I made up, I have to admit myself, when I made up uh, a license plate mottos for a number of states that didn't have them, like Nebraska, a long way across, and that sort of thing, uh, the one I had the rough draft for Arkansas, I couldn't fit it on the plate, was Arkansas not as bad as you might have imagined. <laughs> and I think, I think Arkansas people are, are looking forward to this to show that um, it's really um, not as bad as you might have imagined. Now, Ellen, if you are a social hostess right now and you want to kind of get a leg up on everybody, uh, what are you doing at this point? Um, I guess I'm reading the paper and trying to figure out who's coming to Washington and how I can get them at my party. Uh, recently, the uh, Brookings Institute, a uh, think tank here in Washington, held one of its board meetings. And uh, Vernon Jordan, the transition czar for the Clinton administration, showed up. He's, uh, he's one of the trustees, and he showed up. And people say that it was almost extraordinary. There was this sucking sound <laughs> as the entire room moved toward Vernon Jordan in kind of a magnetic, um, me first, what about me kind of way. So that's what's happening right now. That's true. I, I ran into him at Duke Zebert's, which is a, you know, a famous restaurant here in town. And he was sitting there at his table, and everybody kept stopping by you. They came in almost to pay homage to him. And most of us, our Rolodexes are useless now. All the names we had on them are people we don't need to know anymore. But, Chuck, you remember back in the Carter days when the Carter folks came in, they, they were a little standoffish about all this Washington stuff. And that's where they made a big mistake. You can't really fight against Washington. You have to understand there are power brokers around here, and if you want to make it work you have to play the game. And I think uh, this administration has people who understand that, and the people who are here are very quickly rushing around at, at dinner parties or whatever it's going to be to find out who do we need to know. Um, I think this crowd is very, very sophisticated and realizes that you cannot succeed in Washington as an outsider. You have to be an insider. You have to play the game. And they're learning from the Carter administration's mistakes, of which there were many. Well, let's, let's hold it right there, because I think the American people were saying they really would like to see some serious change. So how Mr. Clinton walks that tightrope, we can talk about when we come back. A test drive, six miles on smooth roads. If I was only driving six miles on smooth roads, I'd buy a bike. I'd get in shape. Let me test drive in rush hour traffic so I can see if it'll last like a Subaru. Let me test drive it to snowy Alaska so I can see if it has all-wheel drive like a legacy. Don't take me around the block. Let's get it to 50 and slam the brakes so I can see if it offers any like brakes like a legacy. Test drives aren't real. What's real is the money I'm spending. Show me. Tell me. I have the money. I want to know what to drive. My glasses are so heavy. Can Lens Crafters help? You need Lens Crafters exclusive feather weights. Lighter, slimmer. They're so light and so comfortable. I hardly know I've got them on. Lens Crafters better fit for greater comfort in about an hour. 
Ace Best Buys are terrific values every month, like these. This Proctor Silex 12 cup pause and serve coffee maker is just $12.96, and Ace 70 mini light sets are only $2.88. Ace Best Buys. Another reason Ace is the place for you. Remember your high school days, the prom and graduation? Do you ever wonder what your old friends are doing now? On Saturday, November 21st at the Val Air Ballroom, you can get together, dance, and relive old memories at Iowa's biggest class reunion and dance party. Wear your school colors and relive the memories at Iowa's biggest class reunion and dance party. Tickets are only $10, available at Dillo Super Value, Iowa Ticketmaster Centers, or charge by phone. Don't miss it. From all of us here on The First Report, a big thank you to everyone who tunes in weekday mornings at 6. We'll continue to provide you with the best local news and weather around, plus give you a chance to join the Breakfast Club. Because of your tremendous response, Channel 5 and Country Kitchen are making the Breakfast Club an even better deal by doubling your chances of winning. For details on how to join the Breakfast Club, watch the Channel 5 First Report. Weekday mornings at 6. There's no medication, there's no other surgery. Let him see Luther. I mean, you know, they created a miracle in what they did by letting Luther have his liver. Options were essentially death within probably uh, 15 to 20 minutes. It was the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Like my doctor says, every month there's something new, so don't give up hope. Paul Longo's Medical Breakthrough Report, only on the Channel 5 News 10 o'clock report. If you think your children are safe at school, you should see our hidden camera pictures. This is not the inner city. It's America's heartland. Watch Primetime Thursday. Well, we're talking about the Washington world as they get ready for the Clintons' arrival. And Calvin, you see the problem. If, if the Clintons come into Washington riding a wave of people who are saying, we're sick to death of business as usual, but the only way they're going to get along is to play a little business as usual. There's a, there's a kind of dilemma that they're caught on there, it seems to me. Well, they're going to have to. And I think, as somebody pointed out, both Clinton and Gore spent part of their teenage years in Washington. They're really not strangers to any of this stuff. Uh, uh, Clinton went to college there. Gore grew up in a hotel. He was a sort of uh, Tennessee Eloise at one of those hotels <laughs> there for a number of years. Uh, and I and I think that it's obvious that they're um, uh, they're going to have their own guys with tassels shoes. I mean, they might be slightly different in the sense that the Bush administration went pretty far when you think that for four years the president and the three most important secretaries uh, all were white Protestant men who had attended Ivy League colleges, and I suspect all of them went to boarding school except Cheney probably. So the so the uh, it, it, just having a little bit of change in that way is going to is going to make some difference, at least in the tone of the administration. I think. I know, Ellen. One of the other mistakes that people say President Carter made was doing things like carrying his own garment bag. You know, he, well, he really wanted to change things and show that he was not imperial. He's just a regular guy like. Yeah, the rest he should of have had one with those little wheels on it. It was showed him <laughs> a little smarter. It goes around corners. <laughs> right. But I, I see no evidence that Clinton is going to carry his own garment bag. Now, he may feed his own cat, but I don't think he's going to be carrying his own garment bag. Um, uh, there, there, there are a lot of things to be learned uh, from the way Carter did things not to do them. And uh, Bill Clinton certainly doesn't want to be just a one-term president. Also, I think those symbols, they, they, I think they, people like us make a, a big thing of them, and then they go away pretty quickly. I mean, I don't know if, if you remember uh, even now uh, Ronald Reagan's jelly beans. I mean, they were a big thing for a while, and all the Wall Street guys were getting in on the ground floor of jelly bean companies, and everybody was making jelly bean jokes. And then after a while, the jelly beans just sort of disappeared, and the, uh, I think the uh, pork rinds disappeared. This was uh, George Bush's uh, attempt to be um, Texan, uh, although they were served in silver bowls, of course. They were pork rinds. Um, I think that stuff goes very quickly, and then you're actually left with... Uh, 
with what you do. Well, I suppose but, the Clintons will probably be eating great mounds of broccoli or something like that. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but Forrest, I think those are just image things, and that's what Carter got himself so caught up in. I think one of the things you're going to see in this administration is this is a younger administration, and it's going to bring a mix. It's a mix of new people coming in. It's the first new people in a long time into this city. I mean, at the magazine, The Washingtonian, where I work, we're preparing an inaugural issue. It's called Our Turn. And that's basically what's going on here, and I think you're going to see the mix of that plus the insiders to try to make it work. And that's what seems smarter than the Carter administration, which was not very smart. But I do believe we're going to see a lot more women and a lot more baby boomers, people of the baby boom generation in positions of authority, positions of power, not just window dressing, not just women uh, and other and minorities uh, in the background of pictures in the cabinet room. They'll be at the cabinet table. And I think in terms of substance, that, that is an important difference from the uh, Bush administration, which largely is, is dominated by white men, older white men. Well, Ellen, since we've got you here, it seems only fair to ask you what the uh, media elite are going to be doing. There's going to be some chair shifting as we try to adjust to this, huh? Um, oh, absolutely. Um, in, in term, there's a, a great change of, of media elite and, and regular media people just like me. Uh, I think that a change in administration brings a lot of different faces in the media covering that administration as well. But there are certain faces that never change in the media. I mean, there, there are some people. That's the, that's the kind of different and one of the most absolute things about Washington is the media is always here. But there uh, will be the, the people who covered that campaign are going to probably shift to the White House now, so you'll have a lot of different players. Also, it seems to me that the media now, which uh, Bush uh, kept saying was on Clinton's side, uh, whatever side they were on, uh, they will now turn and bite him on the ankle because it, it's it's really uh, our job um, in a way. I I uh, I think I had a couplet la last week that said, uh, "We see not a uh, a knight upon a charger, uh, but just a target large and getting larger." <laughs> I think you're going to see uh, that 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 uh, what we're, I think the honeymoon's over. Right? It's about, it was already been about a week and a half. Do you remember uh, when Mr. Clinton was at a golf club and he yes. he chewed out the manager of the golf club for letting for, the press yes. for letting us right. in? Yeah, big mistake already. But um, but they get temperamental. All presidents do, and we'll be snapping at him. I think you'll find a lot of the people that he thought were his friends are going to be snapping at him, and he'll get just as defensive when he gets in the White House. We've yeah. got a few seconds left, Ellen. What, what advice would you offer the Clintons to weather this storm that they're riding into? Well, I, I would often, I, I think they should b both give me an exclusive interview as their first, <laughs> their first step in Washington, D.C. Just like a reporter, <laughs> you're true to form. <laughs> Calvin, you want to take a quick shot at that? Well, I think they should, um, they should probably uh, let Hillary, um, I mean, let um, uh, Chelsea, uh, either go away to school or or somehow get out of there or or maybe maybe bring some people with her from arkansas it seems like a a lonely place for a little girl to me all right a good point to leave it thank you all for talking to us tonight we'll be back in just one moment at ford motor company we don't just build quality cars and ford trucks customer assistance center how may I we build you? relationships my entry. our customer assistance department assists over 4,000 people a day on everything from warranties to how to program a keyless entry system it's part of a whole One, philosophy two. at ford that's rapidly Good. changing the ownership experience well it's important to us that you're happy with your car thanks for calling ford ford motor company quality is job one it's working it's working now save 25% on selected Goodyear all-season radios for cars and light trucks. Save 25% on Invicta GS. Save 25% on Wrangler AT and HT. That's right, save 25%. Where? Goodyear. When? Now. No one has to tell you that doing business today is more challenging than ever. But all over the world, one company is helping you meet those challenges head on, no matter what it takes. New challenges, new thinking. For the battery that performs three times better than industry standards, you've got to get to Sears. Out here, if you don't have a diehard, you don't have a prayer. Sears Die Hard, the battery you can count on for more power when you need it most. Every 8-ounce bag of Kraft shredded mozzarella is made from two quarts of milk. How do they do that? Well, 
two chickens pour the milk into the cheese that it got so big that it exploded into little pieces. Every 8-ounce bag of Kraft shredded mozzarella is made from two quarts of milk. That's why it always tastes better than imitation shreds made with almost no milk at all. Kraft shredded mozzarella. For all the taste, all the time. K-R-A-F-T. I love that story. Say good morning to Phoenix, a land of cactus and culture. Climb aboard with Joan, Charlie, and Spencer Tuesday on Good Morning America. Once again, our thanks to our guest tonight. Tomorrow night, Ted Koppel will be back with a special Nightline discussion. Spike Lee and a group of high school students talk about his controversial new film, Malcolm X. But that is our report for tonight. I'm Forrest Sawyer in New York. For all of us here at ABC News, good night. This has been Nightline. Nightline is a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. Gumma, gumma, come on, let me show you what it's all about. It's about close calls. First, it's self-defense for Roseanne. God, buy a saw. The first thing we learn to do here is to say no to men. You sure you took this class? And the wedding's on its way, but Luther's wrecked the dress. Oh, it's got a hole in it. Who's back It's Roseanne and Coach Tuesday. Variably cloudy overnight with a low in the 30s. Who put this book in here? What if I got a book in my library that says liberal arts mathematics? For How does that end up? Watch this. See this, folks? This is, this is our trash. This is where we put liberal anything. <laughs>